Hello everybody and welcome to the Magical Learning Podcast for this week. This week it's the regular team and we're talking about taking accountability as a leader. As always, there's fun, there's laughs and some great insight. So enjoy and have a magical week. Hello everybody and welcome to the Magical Learning Podcast for this week. Before we kick off and say hi to everyone, I just want to thank everybody for listening. We are now at episode 151. I forgot to mention last week Ooh, that we were at 150. Woo-hoo. So great effort, everybody. Thanks for tuning in and I uh, hope you feel No wonder enjoying. I feel tired. <laughs> That's it. We, people don't know this, but we record all of them consecutively. So, you know, it's been it's been two straight weeks of just recording podcasts and nothing else. Um, I, was, I was 23 <laughs> years old when we started, folks. True, true story. <laughs> <laughs> and that uh the sultry tones you've just heard there from ceo graham gersmer graham how are you going this week <laughs> apparently old and tired Jess, but other than that i'm good i'm uh back out at my workspace having co-opted uh to Nets office for part of the week to um avoid another encounter with our little reptile friend but everything is Everything is awesome. It's Friday, um, sun shining, birds are singing. I'm not being attacked by a snake. Pretty good. Life's good. We might have to do a collaboration with the Irwin soon, I think. Um, you know, to I uh, yeah, I would, except I I don't want to. But anyway, <laughs> it's a good thought. I'll leave you to follow that one up. <laughs> we won't send that clip to their PR team, but Irwin's if you want to come on the ML podcast, we'll take it. Um, Al, how are you going this week? Um, yeah, probably had a lot going on in our family this week, Jess. So I guess I've been yeah, focusing on being a good father and husband and yeah, supporting my girls while all this sort of is going on in the background. Yeah, good work, Al. Love to hear it. Thanks, Jess. That's all right. And Danette, how are you going this week? Yeah, good, Jess. Um, I've been doing a bit of book writing this week, so that's been fun. And um, back with my Barsie Bees, so that's been good just checking on them. And our orchard is loaded with fruit at the moment, so giving it away, picking it, all those lovely things. So very, very grateful. And how's your week been, Jess? Yeah, my week has been good, and that's good to hear also. Um, Yeah, it's been good, been pretty busy. Uh, I've been writing some more jokes. So also if you're in Sydney or Melbourne, go check out Osher's Not the Nightly News. You can uh I you'll find that on his Instagram, but I'm writing some jokes for that. So if there's any good ones, I wrote them. Um, <laughs> hey! <laughs> um well today we're gonna to be talking about taking accountability as a leader, which is a topic that I always find uh fascinating because I think that people have always good and bad stories about this. And so I think it's nice to kind of like reflect that. I think if you are a leader, sometimes this can be a useful lesson. It's something that I think, you know, is always good to kind of keep a reminder for yourself about. Um, so I might start with you, Graham, today. What are some benefits of taking accountability as a leader? Um, great topic, great question, Jess. Thank you. Some of the obvious ones, just from an individual perspective, for the, the person who is in that leader role um, around um, being a good role model, building more confidence and a self of a sense of um, it, it's like sort of self efficacy. Because uh, sometimes you know, holding yourself accountable as a leader can be hard. Obviously, otherwise we wouldn't be having this conversation. So. Um, learn understanding that that you can do the hard things as a leader. That it, it's a good thing to do. It's a right thing to do. Um, some of the the peripheral benefits. Um, it, it's it's a great culture to build within an organisation. It's a really good message to send as a leader to everybody else around you. I'll stop there. That's a great question. Mm, yeah, and I love that. Um, I think that's so true about the culture part of it as well. So I love that, Graham. Thank you for that. Uh, Al, I'll, I'll throw to you now. What are some benefits of taking accountability as a leader? Uh, thanks, Jess. Yeah, I guess the, yeah, very similar to Graham, yeah, to me, it's that personal growth journey where the contrast would be you know, not taking accountability is you know, judging and blaming others, which is a very, very safe space that we can just get stuck in and stay there for as long as we like versus taking accountability uh, is accepting you know, that I am going to risk taking the mistake or taking the mistakes, risk making the mistakes. And yeah, when we make mistakes, that's how we learn. And that's how we grow. Mm, yeah, that's true. And that's a good thing also to put forward to uh, your employers if you're the, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so great. Love that, Al. Thanks for that one. Danette. 
What are some benefits of taking accountability as a leader? So I think um, one, as Graham sort of alluded to, yeah, it's building your confidence because one of the things of being accountable is you're taking action. So you're not being passive in what's going on. And as Al said, you know, you learn through your failure. So it's okay to fail because that's, you know, that's often a really good way to learn. Um, and I think a side benefit of that is when we don't take that action, we're often procrastinating, which means that that there's a lot of gumph and clutter in our head because we're not taking that action. So you never get that space where you just go, ah, because it's always like, oh, I should be doing this, I should be doing this, should be doing this, versus you do the action or you take the action and then all of a sudden it's like, ah, you've got that space then to, again, then think forward. It definitely stretches you um, and there will be times where you are accountable and you're like, oh, I don't think that was my best effort. So, you know, it constantly helps you to stretch and grow, which I think is super important. The other thing is it just creates a way better culture. So um, Brene Brown has this lovely quote that she talks about in Dare to Lead, and it's you're either in the um, shame and blame culture or you're in the accountability culture. And I really like that because the shame and blame doesn't bring out the best in people. Whereas if you lead through being accountable, you encourage others to do it and that creates a way better environment. Yeah, definitely. Great question. Yeah, yeah. Um, well, I think I've got an example that kind of, you sort of reminded me uh, and I think it leads into the second question here. But um, I used to work at a place that constantly had a sign that said, hiring new employees and what they would do is at the end of every two weeks whoever was doing the worst they would just fire that person and what Aww. that what that yeah it was not good that place doesn't exist anymore but uh it's obviously you know it kept the pressure high but it also made it extremely difficult to be charitable to other people because mm -hmm. they're literally your competition so it was a pretty bad place to work but you know at the end of the day it has shut down so that doesn't surprise me um wow <laughs> yeah yep. Yeah, it was not good. Even when I was there, I thought this isn't good. And I was only 22. I thought this probably isn't right. Um, this probably isn't smart. <laughs> but that's all right. Um, Jeanette, that I mean, that's one example of uh, the negatives of not taking accountability. But uh, what are some negatives of not taking accountability as a leader? Yeah, and, and Jess, I'm just going to go back to your story before I get to the question to say that there's actually a lot of positive science about cultures where there is that accountability, that they tend to be more sustainable and better, like there's better performance. So the one you experience, which is really not fun, is, is a really um, constricted poverty type mentality where it's about competing with one another and pulling each other down versus you know, when we've got a really highly accountable culture, we're lifting each other up, we're working, we're learning together, et cetera. And I think that's yeah, that's where we want to go. So that's sort of not to the the question you just asked. But in terms of the some of the negatives that I think about, um, and I, I'm going to use a, a quote from a website first, which is Habits for Wellbeing website. So we'll put a link in there. And they had I was looking for just quotes on accountability. So they had twenty co quotes to inspire accountability. And just before they started their quotes, they made the point, we are accountable for everything in our lives, our thoughts, our feelings, and our behaviours. So if you think about it, literally every one of us is accountable. Now, whether we choose to take that responsibility or not is a whole other word, a whole other thing. But that means that, you know, it is every thought that we think, whoa, I'm accountable for all of them. That's not easy. Every belief I've got, every attitude, every behavior, ultimately I'm I'm accountable. So it isn't easy. And I once worked in a culture, sounds a bit similar to yours, and I'll share it in the next one. But again, where you stood up and you tried to do the right thing, it was like the crabs in the bucket, the pulling people down rather than lifting people up. So great question. Thanks, Jess. Yeah, no, that's right. And great examples there. Um, and that crabs in a bucket's a good metaphor. I haven't heard that one before, but very uh, good one. Uh, Al, over to you now. What are some negatives of not taking accountability as a leader? Um, yeah, I guess going back to what you are mentioning, Jess, about you know, having community, what came up for me listening then was you know, being isolated. Like Danette said, we're, we're not taking accountability for our own you know, emotions, our own feelings, and we start putting those things onto other people. People don't want to be around us. And, you know, 
And I guess yeah, that has an overall effect on the team and the culture, like Graham was mentioning before. Yeah, true. And that's a, also another way to sort of look at it is not just from actions, but also emotions. So I love that, Al. Great insight. Um, Graham, I'll throw to you now. What are some negatives of not taking accountability as a leader? Can I just acknowledge the, the breadth of um, discussion so far? Uh, you know, Danette and I are in the middle of nowhere in a, in a straight line. I don't know, what are we? 317.69 kilometres from the ocean, and yet we already have a, a um, like a seafood team coming through in this, which uh, is great if you like crabs, I guess. Um, all of the all of the opposite, I guess, of the the benefits of taking accountability. So it's it's it can potentially be damaging to your self image, your sense of competence and confidence that it's that self efficacy thing again. Um, obviously, it can have a um, a very very negative or adverse uh, impact on culture within an organisation. It's not a great message to send out to everybody else. Um, the other thing that I had written down was, and and the so not taking accountability erodes trust, and as as we know, trust is like the the foundation, the cornerstone for everything that is amazing or can be amazing in organisations. So the minute people who are seen as leaders stop practicing accountability, potentially it starts to erode trust, which then as a as a flow on effect with um, things like communication, collaboration, productivity, quality, and, you know, ad nauseum. Um, so that's my short answer. I was just trying to wrap it up with uh, an anecdote about um, some sort of mollusk, but I can't. I'll get back to you on that one. <laughs> There's still one more question, Graham. So you've still got time, you know. <laughs> um, but I think that uh, what you just mentioned also remind me of another workplace, Graham, which is when you're talking about that trust. And it actually, I think, because the final question that I'm going to ask, uh, you know, our audience can get a sneak peek for um, about a minute further into the podcast, which is I'm going to ask about examples of our accountability did or didn't work. But yep. what you're talking about with trust is I remember I worked at one workplace and Everyone basically was on the same page, which was, you know, there wasn't too much to do and we would have the managers come around sometimes. And, you know, once they saw that everything was done and there weren't a lot of people coming through, there's not too much more you can do. You can go and really clean things. But at the end of the day, if they're already clean, you're just, you know, recleaning something to fill time. Uh, and that was fine. We understood that. Everyone understood that was the case. And then they had someone come in who was very meticulous and wanted to do everything, but then they wouldn't trust other people to do things. And even though everyone was meeting the standards of the manager above them, they we, we weren't really meeting this person's standards because they had a particular yep. way of doing it. And one thing that the above management actually ended up doing, even though this person was really good at their job at an individual level, they actually moved them on to a different department because they thought they were ruining the culture of this particular thing. It was harder for everyone to come into work. And I thought that was a great example of some leaders taking accountability and understanding that, A, this is, person might be good for a different department, but how they're working isn't working within the team. And it's not like there was any real complaints, but it was just the lack of trust that everyone felt from that person yeah, made yeah. the experience a lot worse. So anyway, um, but yeah, that's that when you were just mentioning trust, that was an interesting point. Nice. So which, mm -hmm. which um, is a great response for question three. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I can now sort of abrogate any sort of accountability for answering that question. <laughs> Thanks, Jess. I like that. Well, Graham, I'm actually going to stick with you on question three. I hope you've got a fish, a fish pun ready. Um, <laughs> what, what examples can you think of where taking accountability has worked or not worked? And why did it have that result? There's a great scene in Finding Nemo, but we're not going to go there. Um, well, we could. Have we got time? No, we probably haven't. I think um, one thing that came up before, just on the on the 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 topic of of um, you know the negatives of or disadvantages of not taking accountability, is that as a, as a leader we can spend a lot of time stuck in image management mode, um, where we're trying to portray a, a front to a whole bunch of other people. Um, Examples of, of taking accountability, because I was thinking, well, where's an example of where I haven't taken accountability? 
And I thought, geez, we haven't got that much time to talk about all of those. So one still resonates for me from my childhood uh, when I was yeah, preteen and um, could have told the truth about something but didn't, which is not being accountable. Um, the flow on effect from that actually impacted quite a number of people. And, and I felt crap about that for all, uh, no time at all. But about 10 years later, when I was a bit older, I started thinking, yeah, that was not a good thing to do. Um, it's easy to find examples of where other people haven't uh, been accountable. But I wanted to go back to one of Al's points before about, you know, making mistakes is how we learn and grow. So, so one example of somebody not taking accountability as a leader is not taking accountability and then refusing to pause to reflect on that and learn from it and continuing to say, well, it's not my fault. It's, they're just all a bunch of idiots. It's not because I didn't you know, commit to doing what I said I was going to do. It's just that they're a pack of idiots. So what, I don't have anything to learn. It's, what are you talking about? It's not my problem. And And I might be projecting just a little bit. I'm done. Okay, there was no, there was no fish, lovely fish ending. Oh, well, we I could know. talk about, we could talk about. This. Was it Bruce, the intervention with Bruce? Oh, that was yep. his friends taking accountability <laughs> for Bruce's actions. Yeah, and that's that's finding Nemo for people that want to go check that one out. Um, highly recommend that one. <laughs> Thanks, Graham. <laughs> um, Al, I'll throw to you now. What are some examples you can think of where taking accountability has worked or not worked, and why did it have that result? Yeah, I guess I'm thinking along the lines of taking accountability when we maybe shouldn't. And my example is kind of around that where I worked for an engineer once and he always guaranteed that he would fix the job. Yet there were some jobs that just got so involved that he fixed them anyway, regardless of what it cost and didn't pass the cost on to the customer, which you know, didn't work for him. And you know, people loved the fact that you know he could fix anything, but to me, it, it wasn't a, a win-win situation. Yeah, and I think that's a, also a great way to look at it, Al, which we haven't really looked at. But that over taking of accountability where other people aren't, um, yeah, sometimes that can have a negative effect. So good thing to keep in mind. Thanks for that, Al. <laughs> um, Danette, what are some examples you can think of where taking accountability has worked or not worked? Why did it have that result? So I'll start um, first with one that worked, and this was a coaching client of mine where they stuffed up something and um, they were in a senior, senior position and they rang the um, client and basically said, I'm really sorry I stuffed up. I know you probably won't want to be dealing with me anymore. And the um, other the client basically went, you're the first person that's ever owned up to something like that. I really respect you. So it had a really good flow on effect. Um, and we celebrated that because that was stepping up in terms of accountability. The the one I see when it's the opposite is I'll hear people making lots of excuses for why they can't do something. So it feels uncomfortable. I have to have a difficult conversation with someone. Oh, I don't want to do that. So I'll see um, senior people trying to fob that off on someone else or just not have the conversation at all. And so the other poor person's getting the message that things are okay, but actually they're not. And they can't change if they're not getting that feedback. So I would say as leaders, um, and I'm not perfect, so I definitely make excuses from time to time. What, I, what I've learned to do is really notice, okay, what, what's that excuse about? What's What am I avoiding there? And I know that that's not then the best version of me. Um, so don't sit with the discomfort. It, it isn't fun. And on the other side is we're growing, we're stretching, and we're having a, a much better, more positive impact when we take those actions. Yeah, beautiful. Love that. And great examples as well there. So thank you for that, Jeanette. You're welcome. Um, yeah, no worries. Well, um, I might uh, throw to our final bit of the podcast here, which is, and I'll stay with you, Jeanette. What are your final thoughts on taking accountability as a leader and just the conversation today? Yep. So um, it's really difficult to take accountability if you're not looking after yourself. So I just had a coaching session just before. The person wasn't very resilient. So um, also be gentle on yourself, but please make sure that you look after yourself, that you put self-care in your routine as a leader because otherwise we become way more reactive. And 
I wanted to share a quote from Viktor Frankl around that, which is between stimulus and response, there is a space. In that space is our power to choose our response. In our response lies our growth and our freedom. And I think when we look after ourselves, that allows us to be a better version of ourselves, which allows us to be more accountable and create a, a calmer and a better world. Thanks, Jez. Beautiful. Great, great yeah. topic. <laughs> no worries. Thanks, Danette. Great, um, great insight today. Uh, Al, I'm going to throw to you now. Any final thoughts on the conversation today or the topic of taking accountability as a leader? Yeah, the big standout for me, Jez, is that self-accountability and what Danette just mentioned around actually saying, yeah, I don't know. That's something that I guess has had the biggest impact in my life because it was stressful for me to put on the front and pretend I didn't. And after doing it a couple of times and building that resilience, it is so great to be able to say, I don't know, and we can move on. Yeah, and that's a great point as well. Thanks for that, Al. Love that. Love that. And Graham, any final thoughts on taking accountability as a leader or today's conversation? Lots, Jess. Thank you. Um, but Al, if you did know, what would it be? Good question, Graham. <laughs> yeah, it's not my question, but I really do like it, actually. Um, couple of things. I love some of the quotes that Danette brought along and, and the, the Viktor Frankl one, you know, between stimulus and response as a space. And, and another conversation I had earlier this morning um, just triggered another quote from Dr. James Rouse. And, and I was thinking, you know, what you put into that space is the question, what would love do here? And I, that's such a an innately beautiful human way of taking accountability for how you show up. For argument's sake. Um, I also want to, I was just thinking about this sort of whole uh, positioning a leader as somebody who has um, more accountability because they're a leader. And one of the things that we can sometimes do in being in that sort of, we're not the leader, somebody else's role, is we stop taking accountability for ourselves because it's the leader's responsibility to get us to so in other words, we can all show up as a leader. Um, and I think Al's point about the personal accountability is is massive in that sense. Um, that was it. I also agree with with Danette's comment about self-care. Um, and that, you know, Al was the same before talking about the whole resilience thing. And uh, yeah, it, it's a lot harder for us to hold ourselves accountable um, when we have little resilience. And it's just, I think the whole accountability thing is just another beautiful example of the hardest work that we ever have to do, or sorry, we ever have the opportunity to do, we ever get to do rather than have to do, as human beings, it's the hardest work, is the inner work. It's the most fulfilling work, but it's also the hardest work. And I think accountability is a big part of that. Awesome. Well, thank you for that, Graham. And thank you, Al and Danette, for today's conversation. What a good conversation. I've loved this one. Um, our next couple of episodes, we're going to have some guests. Uh, and so Yay. you can look forward to that those ones if you're listening in. I also would recommend Spotify's got some new features. So if you go check out our podcast on Spotify, you'll see you can ask us questions. Uh, you can maybe watch the video of this. There's a lot of fun features. So definitely worth checking out this episode there or future episodes. And until next time, have a magical week. Thanks, everyone. <laughs> Thanks, everyone. Yay!